Good evening and hello to you all. I hope you've had a wonderful Saturday. Saturday the 16th of December. The Christmas is fast approaching and many of you are getting into the spirit of Christmas. So I'll be talking about people who are anti the spirit of alcohol, which I think is the most ludicrous thing of all. But we will be covering a variety of topics from Delia Smith and the attack upon her today to Cliff Richard upsetting viewers on ITV's uh, James Martin Saturday programme, which I most definitely did not watch. A homeless man in a shed in SW3 on Cheney Walk. Couldn't get a better address for a shed, I have to say. Good for him, in a way. And the wonderful new Notre Dame rooster that has gone up on the cathedral there. So that's amongst the topics we shall talk about tonight. So good evening to Louise, to Paulie, to Mother Duck, Pip, Bambi, and Heidi, and Karen, and Anna, and Nicole, Rue, and formerly ITBC, and Gin Bottle Pam. I do like your name, Gin Bottle Pam. Um... Tonight I'm actually having a glass of white wine, but I did have a gin and tonic earlier, so there we go, or two, and also a beer, or two, and maybe other things also, perhaps later, who knows. The evening is young, so um, here we are, and I do apologise to those of you who are in other territories and find it that this time is inconvenient, but... 9.30 suits me quite well. It suits me a treat right now at this time. So 9.30 is a preferable time to doing earlier. But here we are. So I shall begin by talking about, um, I don't know, shall we do the fun or the, the fury? Um, let's think. Um, I think we'll begin with the positive news, which is the Notre Dame Cathedral today installed a new crane, by crane, a new golden rooster on the Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, it's a dramatic phoenix um, with licking flamed feathers. It goes beyond being just a weather vane atop of the cathedral spire, according to the Associated Press in Paris. Um, it symbolizes resilience amid destruction after the devastating April 2019 fire. Um, da, 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 da. Um, so, um, the, the new rooster, according to the architect, um, signifies a ray of light. There was, there was hope that not everything was lost. The beauty of the old battered rooster, which is still now going into a museum, I believe, expressed the cry of the cathedral suffering in flames. Um, it's half a metre long and it gleams in the December sunshine and it's his phoenix. Villeneuve elaborated that since the fire, we've worked on this rooster, the successor, which sees the flame carried to the top of the cathedral as it was before, more than 96 metres from the ground. It is a fire of a resurrection. Um, I think this is wonderful that people have come together to restore this building. And, you know, immediately billionaires all over France gave money to support this. A fortune was raised. And um, I think this is a great thing of... Um, rejuvenation at a time and a place where something was so bad, just like with Windsor Castle. This was this is a moment of hope and a good use of skilled carpenters, builders, and everybody else. Wonderful and to be encouraged instead of destruction, like has occurred at, say, the Crooked House pub in England, where the nasty little villains burnt it to the ground and a pub in Lancashire which was razed to the ground in the constituency of Nigel Evans MP, um, which was literally bulldozed. And that should that has been decreed it should be rebuilt brick by brick. Let's see if it happens. A pub in London was rebuilt brick, brick by brick, but 
this rooster is a symbol of hope for us all. I think it is a positive thing that is, it has been done at this time of year. And they are aiming for, you know, a reopening of this cathedral in the imminent future. They are, they have worked tirelessly and quickly. And I think it is a great thing. And having been there recently, um, not to visit the cathedral, but in the vicinity, and I've seen it from a distance there, but I um, do think it will be a wonderful thing. And it's a beacon of hope and a beacon of humanity triumphing over a tragedy, which was the tragedy of beautiful artifacts being burnt to the ground and history being destroyed. Now, we should make those people that burnt down the Crooked House pub. It's a much lesser important thing in the scheme of things to many, but to many people, that local pub meant something to them. So that local pub should jolly well be a rebuilt too. So let's get the Crooked House pub rebuilt. The campaign to support it is there on the Facebook. I don't know where else people campaign for it, but please support whatever campaign you can find out there. You're probably better at Googling than I am. So I do hope that you will support that campaign. And when you can, I do hope you'll also visit the Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, on a more negative note today, James Martin, who is a chef who um, a friend of mine works with him on a gin brand, and I've always found him a jovial fellow. You know, he was somebody who used to go out with uh, Barbara Broccoli, the lady behind the Bond franchise. So he's had a very interesting life. You know, he ran a restaurant in Yorkshire. He comes from a farming background. I think he's a jolly, jovial gentleman. Absolutely wonderful. It was a shame he left the Saturday Kitchen, but he obviously felt the need to move on. But today, he on his show on ITV, he had a guest who the audience declared was insufferable. They said, we're out. A veteran pop singer, according to the Mirror, I would call him a creepy Christian crooner, called, you've guessed it, Cliff Richard. Cliff Richard came on his show. And is it correct to have Cliff Richard on the show after the insufferable guest behaved so badly on other shows recently, including on the ITV this morning, where he was a guest of honour with the dreadful, didn't confirm or deny whether she ever repaid the money she took from the um, sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, uh, Fergie, the Duchess, Sarah Duchess of York, who did a bit of fat shaming of Alison Hammond and also made rather a fool of himself on another programme, um, the Saturday Kitchen, where he upset the guests there. So the public were very disgruntled. Um, people turned off. They said, Cliff Richards is insufferable. Sorry, James, he's completely ruined your episode of Saturday Kitchen. He ruined the completely ruined the episode of Saturday Kitchen a few weeks back. He will no doubt have the same effect on your show. I'll pass after his appearance on This Morning Another Road. Surprised he had his picture with anyone bigger than him, which is basically anyone. Now, Cliff Richard is someone, as you all know, I don't like. And uh, Betty Clark says, be kind. Now, I won't be kind to the revolting Cliff Richard. Cliff Richard is one of the most revolting people I've ever come across. He is someone who talks nonsense and in dri uh, he talks drivel. This is a total nuisance and a total pest. And he's out there promoting himself in a way that is beyond ridiculous. This is um, Hearts and Minds and all the rest of it that he comes out with. Um, I see Nick, Christina, uh, busted, sorry, we're going up. I was impressed with Hearts. Um, you know, he upset um, uh, people last month by talking about um, Elvis Presley. 
and uh, saying why he didn't want to be photographed with him because he was overweight and he didn't want a picture of a fat part. He said he put on a lot of weight. I thought if I'm taking a photograph with him and it's going to be hanging on my refrigerator, he's got to look good. I put it off and then, of course, he died. And this Alison Hammond was not happy. Um, he said you should never have put it off just because they're a little bit heavier. And she was very upset by this. She added, if you're a fan of somebody, if you get the chance to meet them, meet them, even if they put on weight. She later joked, is that why you don't want to be at your house? Well, he is a very rude man. And I do think it's very disappointing that James Martin had this rat bag who is a self-publicist and a bore who's ever promoting his tedious calendar at this time of year, this calendar that should be completely scrapped. I don't know who it who would earth would buy it? You know, hello, Kitty. Um, I won't say any more about that, but, um, you know, there we go. Um, you know, this is um, an instance of a man, a mouse, not a man, who is is constantly given airtime when he has little to no real relevance to the modern era. This is a man who used to be happy to be photographed with Max Clifford, and his wife, former wife, uh, Max Clifford is now dead. But, you know, Max Clifford went to prison for being a paedophile. He was happy to be photographed with a Rolf Harris, a child abuser. He was happy to be photographed with Gary Glitter. You know, this is a man who uh, was happy to be photographed with Jimmy Savile. This is a man who was happy to be photographed with Lord Boothby, another, another creep. Um, was f happy to be photographed, but claimed he'd only ever met them once, but seemed to wear two different outfits. So um, he was happy to be photographed with the Crays, a notorious supposed crime family. Um, I don't think they're quite as important as people made them out to be. Anyway, this is a man who really has had too much airtime. And, you know, last Christmas... He promised to make gravy on Cliffmas Day, as he called it, with Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield. That was back in 2022. Well, it didn't work out well for Holly, golly, wally, dolly, did it? She's um, She's been binned, and Philip Schofield, well, we all know what became of him. Um, the over-botoxed... Um, Harry Roger Webb, as his real name is known, um, should be rotting in a bargain bucket, yellow stickered um, place in a, you know, charity shop with his calendar. And um, Christmas Day with mistletoe and wine and all of that. And, you know, his involvement with such revolting people. Um, he is truly somebody who should have not been put on the air. Thank God I didn't watch it. I didn't know about it until afterwards, but I'm not going to be going on the catch-up TV, which I just about know how to work. There we go. So I do think that um, this man, mouse, not a man, um, hiding behind the veil of religion, as Anna Perkins puts it, and nobody's allowed to reference his friendship with a, a vicar. Um, I don't know if the vicar's still going or not, but... Um, the vicar hasn't been pictured lately, so maybe the vicar's no longer around, but we don't know. Cliffy, Jiffy, Piffy, Dippy, says Kevin Hens. Yes, a bit of a bit of jolliment about Cliffy's name, yes. Um, just if you want to have uh, a horror moment, aside from watching Scylla Black's appalling videos, which have been doing the rounds on the Twitter for weeks now, and people are trying to outdo themselves with the worst moment of Scylla, do watch the video of Scylla's funeral with Cliff Richard singing. I have played it to some of the most varied people in from the business world to politicians to ordinary people to, you know, a whole variety of people. Not one of them thought that it was a decent way to behave at a funeral. And you have to look at the faces of the priests in the cathedral in Liverpool where Scylla was being buried and there's her rotting corpse and he is singing like he's singing at a pop concert. It is quite beyond revolting 
and it's disgusting and it's appalling. It's one of the most horrible, horrible things I've ever seen. And I've seen some pretty horrible things. I've seen some grim photographs, but that will haunt me forever. Cliff singing, ooh. I won't do any more of it because I don't, I can't sing, but nor can he. He's, he is a cre creepy Christian crooner who rams the religion and his nonsense down our necks and goes on that terrible program, Loose Women. The Loose Women should be banned also. If there were a pro program called Misogynistic Men, it would be not allowed. It would be complained by the woke, woke in our society and condemned. If, if they're allowed to have loose women, there should be a program to counter it called misogynistic men. Um, I'm not a misogynistic man, but there should be people of that type. And I'm not saying people like Andrew Tate deserve to be promoted, but these loose women are just as appalling in the disgusting views they come out with. And they have people on their program like Tamara Eccleston, the daughter of a convicted criminal fraudster. That says it all to me. They have guests uh, of the type. Um, the the girlfriend of the acid-throwing Arthur Collins, Fern McCann, um, you know, an appalling, abhorrent person who threw acid over people in, um, um, in a nightclub and ruined their lives. And then she had a child with this man um okay she didn't throw the acid but she she did go around promoting beauty products on the day that um um this individual was sentenced so she is pretty tawdry and why should she be on any such program and the likes of um the birds of a feather woman who i have to say i encountered at a funeral cackling like a hyena absolutely sickening gross and grim and grimmer than grim. Throw them all on the Bibby Stockholm and let Cliff sing to them. They will all want to jump in the ocean. Send it out to sea. Now, this disgraceful Bibby Stockholm where that poor man died this week, again, I just think it should be condemned. Um, I think it's tragic what happened to that man and all these politicians going, oh, we send our condolences to the family. They don't give a damn about that. Shame on them. Absolutely appalling. Anyway, we shall move along to the next topic. I think we've done enough of creepy Christian crooner Cliff. And the next topic shall be the matter of the homeless man. Now, now, I've got to get the information out of me. Um, here we are. So, um, where I often used to walk on Cheney Walk in um, uh, Tony, uh, Ritzy, che uh, Chelsea, um, it's a street where all sorts of pe people from Michael Bloomberg to um, uh, Mick Jagger um, to... The people who own the old Vic Theatre, they all have homes there. Um, it is a street that has had countless famous people live there, paint there, work there, and the houses are pretty spectacular. You know, Sol Campbell has a house for sale there, which has been for sale for an awfully long time, because I think it's a little overpriced. And his wife, who is um, a scion of the Barrett Holmes dynasty, which may say something about the um, property itself, um, he did leave Kelly Hoppen and marry this um, scion of the Barclay, uh, Bar uh, Barrett Holmes. And um, they did spend an awful lot of money on this house. And I think it's it was about 25 million. I think it's now about 17 million. Um, you can buy their house. It's still available or you can rent it. Uh, they had all sorts of problems with their tenants. But across the road on the embankment opposite, uh, next to the Albert, uh, Al the, not the Albert Bridge, sorry, the Battersea Bridge, is now a man living in, as a homeless person. He's built himself a shack. Now, his name is um, Shahu Amini. 
and he's built an eight foot by four foot shed underneath the Battersea Bridge. Um, he did lots of searches on Google, he says, for houses close to the river or sea. I got my inspiration from these. My place is very beautiful. It's very cold at night, but the view is amazing. He counts his neighbors as um, Mick Jagger, Rock, uh, Brian Adams, and Hans Rousing. Uh, Crosby Hall, which is owned by Christopher Moran, who also owns a building called, um, well, I won't give it its nickname, but it's got a, it's a building uh, called the Chelsea Cloisters. I think many of you might know, after what I talked about last night, what the Chelsea Cloisters is all about. So, um, he is living in his little shed, and he's harming nobody. He seems to keep it very clean from the pictures. Um, I have been in contact with a few of the, lo the locals myself. The Daily Mail have written about him, but I've been in contact with a few locals, and um, most of them said how very enterprising. This is a little alleyway that leads to nowhere next to the bridge. It's, I've always found it when I've gone near there. It was a funny little space. It's just a totally pointless road to nowhere. And this man has built himself a home there. Now, you could say, how dare he? And, you know, you can't just build a home anywhere. But he keeps it very clean. Um, he dines al fresco when the weather is good. He sits on a Union Jack fold-out camping chair. He admires sweeping views of the river and Albert Bridge. Um, he's been preparing elaborate meals, chopping up fresh vegetables, herbs and meats and stews and curries. He finishes cooking them on his stove. He was born in the Iranian city of Mar Marijuan and came to the UK as an asylum seeker in 2013. He speaks little English. Um, it's all gone, he says, of his previous life in Iran. My head is not the same since this accident. I don't remember most thing about my life. It cost him £300 to build the shed. He bought the materials from a builder's yard. His home has no heating and he relies on a hot water bottle for warmth. So he must heat that up using the, the kettle on his stove, I guess. Um, and he stores his possessions. He used to um, keep his things... Um, in a flat somewhere, but he, uh, the one thing I find curious is he claims to use the, the lavatory, they use the word toilet, a word that I don't really like, or, of a local bus station. I don't know where the local bus station is because I don't, as far as I'm aware, there isn't a bus station in the vicinity. Um, but according to this, Responsibility for this part of the embankment in Battersea Bridge falls to transport for London, but it appears that Sadiq Khan's body has no immediate plans to remove the shed or to ask him to leave. Um, he's been, he was living um, rough under Albert Bridge, a few hundred yards along the river to the east, but several months ago he suddenly decided to up sticks and move into his um, accommodation under the Battersea Bridge. And then he swiftly erected overnight his pre-packed shed in the void between the stairs to the bridge and the embankment river wall. Um, he's got two levels, one to store his items and one for him to sleep in. And this man, I think, is rather enterprising. Um, local, one local said, the man looks perfectly at home here. We often see him making dinner on a camping stove. He has a little table and a fold-out camping chair. He's clearly a good cook because he makes stews and curries that smell delicious. He even invited me to share the, the, this food and dine with him one evening. He looks very relaxed and always plays music from his mobile phone and a Bluetooth speaker. I'm not sure if that is something that the locals will appreciate, but there we go. It depends what the music is, as long as it's not Cliff Richard or Scylla Black, I say. Since the weather has turned colder, he puts on a white beanie hat to keep warm. He says that the shed is fine, but the traffic is very noisy. Uh, well, he shouldn't be complaining. He's got a very good location. That seems to be a small price to pay for having lived... Uh, People near, living nearby have paid millions to enjoy the view he's got. No one knows what is going to happen, but surely he cannot stay there. It would be a shame for the shed to be pulled down, but it's quite big and is clearly being used for storage as well as a place to sleep. 
What is to stop other homeless people creating homes like this anywhere, they say? The authorities have said they will reach out to support him. Um, and meanwhile, the transport for London going on about how the people should be given help, da 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 And um, it's a complex issue, says the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea Council. Now, this homeless situation, supposedly our wonderful Conservative government were going to end homelessness in this country. I don't see any evidence of this being stopped. You know, in the first lockdown, when I lived in Knightsbridge primarily, I found there was a lady living in the doorway of the Bunch of Grapes pub near where I lived, um, off Yeomans Row, uh, the corner of Yeomans Row and Brompton Road. And the very kind owner of a restaurant around the corner, who I won't name because I don't want to bring him into it, um, he often fed her and um, I would buy her food at Waitrose and people in the locality gave her ski jackets and all sorts of things and um, everybody tried to encourage this lady to go and, you know, find housing, but I don't know what became of her. But people, some people do choose to live like this. Some people prefer to live like this, but um, there used to be a man on the Brompton Road exactly opposite where this lady was, and he built an encampment to protest about something. I don't know what he was protesting about. It was something completely random. It was... It wasn't your usual protest, but um, he was eventually moved along. But this this particular man is harming nobody. I think he's rather enterprising, and I say good for him. So I salute him, and I do think that perhaps this article was not a good idea because now he'll be pestered and harassed, and that won't be very nice for him. So um, I hope that he's able to live in peace there, um, and um, I hope... This poor man um, is just left alone. So there we go. I've probably not helped the matter by talking about it myself, but I just wanted to say I think that this man should be saluted for, you know, at least being enterprising enough to take over an empty space that is completely useless to anybody else. And he's made it his home, and he can't get a home because he's got no home. And... The poor man has clearly done no harm to anyone, and, he, and the locals are welcoming, from what I gather. Um, the number of local people I wrote to this afternoon, they did say, what an enterprising fellow, and um, we don't have any trouble with him. He's done no harm to us, but maybe there is a counterpoint. But um, I don't know about the loud music, but I don't know how loud it is. But um, There we go. So I do think... It is so sad that people are again homeless this Christmas. If you see a homeless person, buy them a sandwich, take them a drink. Um, you know, not, not necessarily alcohol if you don't wish to. Give them whatever you feel you wish to. You know, um, on Christmas Day, I, when I was in London uh, many years, I often went for a walk and I would take bags of food and just leave them next to the homeless people because I think it's better not to intrude on their privacy. And I would leave them, you know, some sandwiches and some chocolates and things like that and things that might be useful to them. I think that is what we should all do to support people. You know, you don't have to get involved. You could just leave something discreetly. That is the best thing to do. If you have the opportunity and you are near homeless people at this time of year and they're sleeping, don't intrude upon them. Leave them something. That is my personal thing. Maybe I, I'm completely mad and I'm being against the grain of the system, but I think it's better to leave somebody a gift rather than intrude on their privacy. And this man, if I go to London, which I'm planning on doing in the forthcoming days, um, I shall go and visit him and I shall take him something because I think that man leave, and I will not go and harass him I will just leave something. I think that is what we should all do. Nicole asks, did I ever leave them gin? No, I haven't been known to leave homeless people gin. Um, but you can see on my Instagram, there was a man at Victoria Station who I used to go past when I used to shop at the Sainsbury's in Belgravia. And he loved lemonade. So I used to buy him a bottle of lemonade most days of the week. And, uh, 
we used to have a we used to sit and have a chat, and he he'd come in on coach to Victoria Station, and he thought that London was a place where the streets were paved with gold, gold, and they weren't. And this poor poor man who spoke very little English loved lemonade, so I used to take him lemonade. Um, that's what I think um, he wanted. Um, but I have no problem if, if somebody wants to have something. If you're on the street and you're cold, why shouldn't you have a can of cider or a can of beer? Because frankly, okay, the Puritans amongst you will say, oh, you can't give homeless people this because they'll cause trouble. Well, if you're homeless, you're pretty much in despair and something that warms you up and makes you happy is probably a bit better than um, a visit from the drug dealers. So um, maybe I sound like a well-meaning prat, but um, there we go. Um, I do think that there are too many empty homes in Britain. There, are, there, there should be, they should not be allowed to continue to remain empty forever. And, you know, we need to find a way of solving this homeless problem because our government promised us they would end homelessness. Well, where, where is it? There's plenty of homelessness here, even in Broadstairs. You know, there's broad, homelessness all over the country. It's an appalling thing. It's a terrible, terrible thing. In a society, we have rights, we have responsibilities. And the people who are at the lowest level deserve to be supported. So I do think that we ought to do something to solve this problem rather than ignore it. That is what I have to say on that front. Linda Joe is quite right to come in on another point. Food banks should not be the norm. Well said to Linda Joe. This is terrible that people in this country are having to rely on food banks. In France, electricity companies um, are not going into huge profits. Their prices are going up by 4%. And here, they're going to go up by 16%. Because these greedy companies are appalling. Well, well done, Rishi Sunak. Shame on you, the billionaire who's off to go and work for Facebook, no doubt, in California or um, your friend Elon Musk and probably go into the world of AI, which you're obsessed with. Um, you are an utterly shameful piece of disgrace living in your mansions. You know, you've got your mansion in Yorkshire, your mansion in um, Kensington, your mansion in uh, um, California. You No doubt you, you have a homes. You've got uh, several other ones, no doubt. And... You know, give one of your homes up, dishy rishy. Dish it out. You were quite happy to eat out to help out. So what about help the homeless out to eat out? You know, why don't you pay, give them some vouchers to go to some restaurants? Come along, rishy. Hurry up. Shame on you, rishy Sunak. You are one of the worst prime ministers, and you are up there in the league of John Major, really, but you're just a... John Major with a billion billion dollar wife attached. He was a bit more semi-detached, but at least he was a decent person who stood against Brexit, whereas you, the profiteer, did very well out of Brexit, no doubt. Shame on a greedy Rishi. Yes, Rishi and the Home Secretary need a home on the Bibby Stockholm, says Kevin Hentz. Right. Well, I think we've spoken a, a, enough about poor the poor homeless man. And now we're going to speak about another person who has been a victim today. The wonderful, wonderfully wacky Delia Smith. Now, Delia Smith may be known to some of you. The younger amongst you probably don't have a clue who she is. Delia Smith was the TV chef of the... 1980s and 1990s. She is a TV cook, not really a chef, a cook more than a chef. She did a BBC series and spoke about her cooking escapades. And um, this lady was, um, you know, well known for her her programs. And um, Miss Delia Smith, well. Um, she taught 
viewers how to cook an egg in 1998. It's called the Delia effect. Sales rocketed by 10% overnight. That's what they say of her. Now, you'd think that most people would know how to cook an egg, but um, she decided to do it and sales went up 10%. She, is, she was a huge influence. Um, have I ever met Delia? Um, no, I haven't. Um, she also endorsed Aunt Bessie's mashed potatoes, which is a very curious thing to do. I love making mashed potatoes. I like to make mashed potatoes mixed with carrots and a little bit of cream. And um, and um, everyone loves my mashed potatoes also with um, spring onions and all sorts of other things. But I like a, a bit more exotic than Aunt Bessie's. Um, she was baptized into the Church of England, went to a Methodist Sunday school. She later joined a Congregationalist Brownie group and then converted to the Roman Catholic Church. So Delia is a little bit all over the place. That was before the age of 22. So Delia has experimented in life. Um, and um, with her husband, Michael Wynne Jones, she is the majority shareholder currently in Norwich City Football Club. She lives in the area. And the Canaries, or the, um, they've got another nickname, I believe, um, she was once known to get a bit carried away in, in um, I think it was 1996, but I may be wrong. Yes, it was on, uh, sorry, she's been on the board since 1996, um, but, uh, she got herself rather worked up in 2005, I do apologize, um, by deciding to go on the pitch to encourage her team. And um, she shouted to the, through the public address system after hobbling onto the pitch in her high heels, um, this is a message for possibly the best supporters in the world. We need a 12th man here. Where are you? Where are you? Let's be having you. Come on. And um, she did appear to be rather pissed, a little bit smashed. Um, she reflected on the incident um, and recently and said, I love it. Well, it was, a, okay, it was a mistake. I forgot the Sky Television was there. So I went down to the perimeter and I just said, can you get something on the board to say, sing you guys? Because the crowd was just sitting there like little mice. There wasn't time. So they gave me a microphone and said, go on and say it. So I did. This is the kind of thing that perhaps I was, I would also do. I would go along and I, I think the enthusiasm of Delia is to be celebrated. She insisted she was not drunk, but put the incident down to being passionate about the football club. She added, I had had wine with my supper, but I was not drunk. I know that I was wearing heels and it was muddy. It's not easy walking on a muddy pitch with heels. You try it. The problem is that you're not allowed to have passion in this country. If you live here and you show passion, then you must be drunk. The rallying cry didn't work as the Canaries ended up losing 3-2 as Fowler scored his second of the game in stoppage time. That was the opposing team, which was involving the former Liverpool favourite, Robbie Fowler. So Delia Smith today has been attacked. She, um, she was going to a game of um, her beloved Canaries in a grey BMW, and the, the fans started throwing cans of lager at her. At the, her motorcade. So um, she um, was attacked, and I think that is quite appalling. The furious Norwich City manager, David Wagner, called for the idiots who attacked her car before the East Anglia derby to be banned for life. He said, there are idiots all over the world, something I can't stand understand. I don't get in my head how you can behave like this when a woman over 80 drives to a football match, even if she may be supporting the opponent. It makes no sense. Unfortunately, it happened. And hopefully this is the, the uh, 
ridiculous situation that she was in. It makes no sense, and unfortunately, it happened. Hopefully, they'll find the people and they get a ban for life. Um, the 82 year old was seen later chuckling, so she uh, appeared to say it had only been a trick or an apparent reference to the thrown beer. Um, but you know, very nasty. But it seems that um, she owns 53% shares of the club. But um, the American entrepreneur, and that's another word I really don't like, it's rather like celebrity, um, a tacky word. Mark Atanzio, Atanzio has the green light to increase his stake. He may become the majority owner. Um, so it ended with a 2 2 draw with Ipswich, the team that she was involved in. Uh, uh, with a more dominant side. Um, they're called the Tractor Boys. So anyway, I'm not... But she is a supporter of Norwich, I believe. So there we go. Yes, she is a majority shareholder in Norwich City. So I don't know if you remember Delia Smith, but Delia Smith has not only been filmed having... Um, herself drunk uh, allegedly on a football pitch with let's be avenue but now she's had her bmw attacked with cans of lager it's like that program two cans of lager and a packet of chips or something it's called something of that type anyway that is that so uh, poor old delia smith um so delia smith uh, yes we wish her well I think she is a finer chef than the dreaded, um, the dreaded, sainted, um, appalling Mary Berry, who came up on my television screen earlier after my watching the Saturday Kitchen, um, which did feature Rob Bryden, which it wasn't the best episode I've ever seen. But I do like um, Saturday Kitchen on a Saturday morning after Saturday Live, which I've featured on myself a number of times this year. Um, I make a point of trying to get on it, but the sad loss of the Reverend Richard Coles has rather put a stop in my efforts. And uh, my friends and I are rather disappointed that Nikki Bailey has, you know, taken the show to Wales and doesn't seem to have as much engagement with the... Um, with the, with the uh, listener, and um, we do hope that the Saturday Live will revive its involvement of listeners in 2024. Hilary Powell says Mary Berry isn't that bad. Well, I would say Mary Berry is a wizened old tart who's made the nation fat, put her on the Bibby Stockholm. I cannot stand that woman's fake accent. She is so fake and so annoying. Her and Hygella Nigella Lawson put them together. Oh, my God. Um, there are far better people out there in the world of cooking, and that Mary Berry and her bloody cakes. Um, no, thanks. Cake woman. No, thank you. I do not find her appealing in any sense. And as I've probably said before, friends of mine uh, were involved with Mary Berry. Their parents bought a house from her and they ended up with no end of trouble as a result of that. Um, Mary Berry isn't quite as miss, little miss innocent as people make her out to be. She's quite a ruthless old whatever. I don't have much positive to say about the wizened old tart. Um, there we go. She can put her Bakewell tart and shove it wherever she wants. But no, thank you. I cannot stand Mary Berry. She's a bit like Scylla Black in the cooking world. Yuck. No, thank you. The soggy bottom lady, says Anna Perkins. Well, I can think of other things to say of her also. So... Today, The Guardian, The Observer, sorry, it's, it's actually tomorrow's paper. I'm reviewing tomorrow's paper today. Um, I have ref decided to review the concept of what they call NOLO. Now, NOLO to me means nothing other than, you know, it's rather like um, when a property developer who built One Hyde Park decided to rename the area north of Soho as a no-ho. People invent these stupid things 
to try and describe something that's bad and make it seem less bad. Well, NOLO is basically a concept of um, no alcohol in your booze, basically. So it's booze without alcohol, the NOLO market, which has been dominated in 2023 by Guinness 0.0. And, you know, they have um, seen growth of 142% in this year alone. Um, beer accounts for 56% of the market, but um, wines are being sold and they are going on about what they call mindful drinking. These people are complete bores and they're complete annoyances. Okay, some people can't drink and, you know, they might want something else, but we don't have to have this con ram down our throat because these things are being sold at the same price as spirits and normal alcohol. These things are a complete emperor's new clothes. They are complete fantasy. Um, I do not think it is correct that the public are being charged £36 for a bottle of seed lip, which is tree bark pretending to be spirit. And people pay the same price as they pay for a gin and tonic for a seed lip and tonic. And it tastes utterly revolting. It makes me want to vomit. Appalling stuff. I tried it once. I'll never, ever be trying such nonsense ever again. Non-alcoholic beer. I've tried it before. Ugh, yuck. Vomit comet. Dry January. You know, this mindful drinking. And um, the th this woman called Laura Willoughby, she runs a a mindful drinking community club soda tasting room and shop of no low beers, spirits and wine in Covent Garden. Well, she looks like a complete bore and she probably is. Um, she claims um, our customers have been scared off by the old supermarket owned brands, but our new wines are independent companies working directly with vineyards. The alcohol free market is booming globally and younger people are drinking less wine. So it makes sense for the wine world to take their know how and produce something exceptional that pairs with food. It's just taken a bit longer with beer and it's a different as a process. Well, I think that this is a load of nonsense and um, people should be encouraged to think about other things. So um, last year, um, the wonderful Susie Dent came up with something quite to the opposite, which is um, she gives a word of the day. The, the woman, that woman in Dictionary Corner, she calls herself, um, she shared in back in 2022 her word of the day, which was quaffed And I hope you add quaffed to your vocabulary. It's like a little, little, little. Um, maybe I've had a bit much to drink. Cheers to that. So quaffed is a word. It means it's time for a drink. I do say that it should be added to every household's vocabulary and every household's daily ritual. A one-word announcement that it's time for a drink. You know, if you want joy, pour yourself a stiff G&T and yell out, it's quaffed There you go. That's what I say. Um, and... You know, the wonderful Iris Apfel, who is now in um, 102 years old, she said, I haven't stopped drinking yet. And we say cheers to her and cheers to that. You know, good people carry on. Um, television presenter Adrian Childs lamented the overuse of the tedious drink responsibly mantra forced upon us. Quaffed is what should be forced upon us all instead. Let's have quaffed more often. Let's go down and support your local bar, support your local pub, support your local restaurant. And at the time, I shared a few drinking phrases. So here they are for you. This might provide you with a bit of joy and things that you might be able to use this Christmas. If you can't have one at 11, have 11 at one. That's, you know, one I often use and you've probably heard before. Down the hatch, round the gums, look out, Tommy, here it comes. 
Time is only for the middle classes. It must be 6 p.m. somewhere in the world, said someone. Um, it's not my favourite, but there we go. It's a bit predictable. They say no wine before 9, but they don't specify a.m. or p.m. Any day, any time, anywhere. Um, even Anita Rani on homeschooling parents during the January 2021 lockdown, she said, if you've had enough, pour yourself a G&T. You have my permission. That was said at about 10, 10, 10.30 in the morning. Um, BBC presenter Adrian Charles, going back to him, said, alcohol is the only drug you don't have to apologise for taking. I associate drinking with friendship and good times. The advice to drink responsibly is the world's most boring phrase. I totally agree with him. So anyway, another on another occasion, I'll give you some words about gin. But um, um, as Dr. Hawkeye Pierce from MASH once said, I'll stick with gin. Champagne is just ginger ale that somebody knows. So that is all I have to say on all of these matters for this evening. We've already reached 50 minutes, but if you would like a quiz and if somebody is there willing to help with a quiz, you, we can have a quiz. But if you're not, then we'll have to forget the quiz. Harriet is back again. Uh, we missed you yesterday, Harriet. Um, Harriet had a leave of absence, which uh, was a shame. But hip, hip, Harriet. So I'll pour myself a little bit more wine just to be, make sure it's all fine. But um, have I met a Adrian Childs? No, I've never met Adrian Childs. No. I don't know him, um, can't say I have ever met him, but I think uh, his views on uh, drinking are quite responsible. Excellent, in fact. Right, so, right, we will, have, we will begin. If Harriet is ready, our uh, Debbie McGee for the evening. So, question number one. Which printed publications can be called tabloids or broadsheets. Paulie gets the point with newspapers. And uh, Harriet was down the pub, so I hope she was drinking irresponsibly or joyfully, whatever she prefers. Um, drink responsibly is the most boring phrase. Absolutely tedious. Uh, many of the locals here, I wasn't party to this um, activity. I was invited, and unfortunately I didn't go, but I should have gone. Uh, perhaps, but well, maybe I shouldn't. Um, did what were called the 12, the 12 pubs of Broadstairs last yesterday. So they visited 12 pubs in one day. So whether they drank responsibly, I do not know because I haven't seen any of them today. So, yes, uh, Harriet was on the GNT. Right, question two. Which doll did pop group Aqua sing about? The pop group called Aqua. What did they sing about? Bambi gets it with Barbie. So Bambi with Barbie. Okay, Bambi and Barbie. Question three. Who created a Mickey Mouse? A very simple question. You'd have to be the village idiot not to get this one. Uh, Bambi gets it again. Also, Walt Disney. Very well done, Bambi. In food, which Y is made from fermented milk? Which Y is made from fermented milk? Um... Hey Tigers gets it with yogurt. Well done to Hey Tigers. Hey Tigers gets that point. Uh, you were the first to come up on my screen. Right. In motor racing, what are slicks? Uh, Nick Stewart gets it with tires. Well done, Nick Stewart. Well done to Nick Stewart. Our friend Nick is here in the house, so he gets the point. Well done to Nick. Right. What is the name of the um, 
famous stone circle on Salisbury Plain. Bambi gets it with Stonehenge. Well done to Bambi. If on a menu a fish is described as filleted, what does that mean? Uh, Anna Perkins gets it with bones out, bones removed. Um, there we are. Anna Perkins wins the point. In which American city is the Empire State Building? Paulie gets it with New York. New York, New York. Um, one day I'll talk to you about the case of a woman that disappeared, uh, mysteriously became the most famous person to leap off the um, Empire State Building, and uh, it was known as the most beautiful suicide. Um, it's the most fascinating case, and uh, I have thought of writing a novel based upon it. It's something that I was fascinated about during the lockdowns. I spent a lot of time researching. Her name was Evelyn, and um, the photograph captured of her hitting a limousine it looks like this woman is just asleep, and it's the most fascinating story. And they, nobody worked out why this happened because there was no reason for it to happen. But that's a story for another day. How many wonders of the ancient world were there? Um, Nicola Moffat gets it with seven. Thank you to Nicola Moffat. Nicola Moffat gets the point. Right, next page. In television, which comedy double act originally hosted the show? Friends like these. These two, I never know which are which. It wasn't Morecambe and Wise. It wasn't Cannon Ball. Nicola Moffat gets it with Ant and Deck. Nicola Moffat gets the point. Um, uh, what friends of mine have always gone up to them at parties and said, oh, well, which one of you is Ant and which one of you is Deck? Um, I've never actually met them, but um, I knew the girl who was uh, in uh, the Biker Grove with them, um, the lovely um, Donna Eyre. Now, Donna, Donna is delightful in person, but Donna did make rather a boo-boo when she was working for MTV. When she interviewed um, some sisters who were singers, um, her question to the cause was, where did you all meet? Not the brightest spark in that sense, no. But she has since done very well in television drama, and um, she is a delightful person, so um, we give Donna a pass. There we go. She's not up there with Cilla Black, that's for sure. Or Gloria Hunnaford. Which M is the type of drama in which all the actors do not speak or make any noise at all? It's not mute. Uh, Nicola Moffat gets it with a mime. Nicola Moffat gets another point. The boy's own single, No Matter What, came from which West End musical? It was not Cats. It wasn't Grease. It wasn't Guys and Girls. It wasn't Joseph or Love Actually or Carousel. I'm not into musicals, I can assure you, but um, there you go. It wasn't surprise, surprise, and Silver Black and, and Anthea Turner have nothing to do with it. It wasn't Hairspray. It, it, was, it wasn't Montecute, who hates musicals. Uh, Nicola Moffat gets it again with Whistle Down the Wind. And Nicola Moffat goes into the lead, it seems. Nicola Moffat is now in the lead. Right. Um, in the animal kingdom, does a tiger have spots or stripes?
Um, yes, again, Nicola Moffat gets yes another point. Nicola Moffat is storming ahead. Sharon Osvenham is getting it wrong with spots tonight. Um, Sharon Osvenham is normally bang on the nail with her her things, but no, she's striping out here. Not um, no, it seems most of you are are um, getting it incorrect but um there we are the next question in nature which mammal squirts a foul smelling liquid at its enemies when attacked anna perkins gets the point with the skunk anna perkins is correct uh, many others of you are correct, it's, but it's not the Badger and it's not Scylla Black. Um, I know you like Scylla Black to be the answer for everything. You know, we'll soon start referencing another old bag who wrote a poem about me, Pam Ayres. Um, I don't know why her book's looking at me at my coffee table here. I don't drink coffee, by the way. I drink gin. Um, but um, I... I think I acquired it in the local charity, uh, in the local um, chapel bar, which is also a bookshop, um, when I bought like 50 books. And I think that was amongst the bag of rubbish that I brought back. Um, but Pam Ayres once wrote a poem about me. And uh, yeah, she's just up there with Scylla and Anthea and Lizzie Cundy, Busy Lizzie, um, woman known for flashing her knickers at a certain man called Nav, if he's in the room. I don't know if he's around, but he was sending me messages earlier saying he would be. Anyway, busy, <laughs> busy Lizzie is getting some descriptions here from other parties. Um, we'll save her for another occasion. Right. During Prohibition, a terrible period, a stupid period, in 1920s and 30s America, what was made illegal? No, it was not Karen Brady, but sh Karen Brady should have been made illegal. Um, you know, as my father once said, you know, a leading associate of um, dildo floggers. Um, that's what she should be remembered for. And shame on David Cameron for putting her into the House of Lords. There we go. Um, right. Um, Nick Stewart gets it with booze. Yes, booze was made Ill illegal. So... We will accept Nick Stewart as having the point first. So Nick has now got two points. Well done, Nick. Right. In the stories by Jill Murphy, how is Mildred Hubble known when she attends Miss Cackle's Academy for Witches? It's not Glinda. No, it's not Witch. Formerly ITBC gets the point with the worst witch. Well done to Formerly ITBC. You get your first point of the evening, but you're a bit late in the game, so you're not going to win. So I would forget about trying to win, but um, it's all for fun. So it's all for fun. In which English city is Nelson's Column? Nick Stewart gets it again with London. So Nick Stewart has three points. Nick Stewart was very quick there. Um, number nine, which bee is a winter sport that can take place on the Cresta Run? I was asked to go on the Cresta Run once. I think it would have been a bit of a disaster, but I could have worn this gilet, I suppose. It might have been useful. Um, yeah, that would have been a perhaps good thing. Uh, bobsleigh. Yes, so with Bob Slay, Nicola Moffat gets yet another point. So I would imagine that Nicola Moffat has won, but we wait for confirmation from uh, um, Debbie McGee of the evening. And uh, if Debbie McGee of the evening is back with um, a breakdown of who won, but well done to all of you, especially to the people who have joined in newly and taken part for the first time. And um, there are, seems to be quite a few of you. Nick Stewart says, have a great night. We're not over yet. Nicola won. 
Nick Stewart and Bamba, Bambi tied for second. So well done to Nicola Moffat, who is our winner. Nicola Moffat is the strongest link, and Nick Stewart and Bambi tied for second. Well done to you all. I think uh, very good, and thank you for participating. Um, uh, Nicole asks, is that a Bernard Weverall fleece that you're wearing? It's a Bernard Weverall number, yes. Um, I have a number of items from that shop. In fact, the jumper is also from there, and the shirt. I think is, is yes as well. Everything is from there. I tend to get an awful lot of clothes from that place. So, um, my casual attire is mostly from that shop. So there we go. Shame it's no longer in Cadogan Place, Knightsbridge, but it's much better because when it delivers online, it is bargain, bargain prices. So um, there we go. There is nothing on the website now. Well, wait for your wait for the next moment. They will send you an email. Sign up. Um, I don't have any affiliation with them. I wish I did. The amount of people I've sent there, the amount of money I've spent there, you would think they would jolly well wish I did. But um, do I wear a size medium or large? Asks Nicole. Um, I would say. I'm more medium than I'm definitely not large. No, <laughs> um, small to medium for me, but um, medium in most things. But uh, uh, but I, I I'm I have lots of wonderful things from there, and I love that shop. But um, I am not anything to do with that shop um, since it, the gun shop in Knightsbridge closed down. William Evans. I think it was called, and Bernard Weverall were part of that shop, and uh, that was where I used to go rather a lot because it was around the corner from where I lived, and it was a great shop. But um, do I have any pets? No, I don't have any pets. No. Um, I love dogs, and I love horses, and I had a couple of two, two firsts at Cheltenham today, and I very much enjoyed that, and I will be back to doing my horse racing tips for my loyal followers of those in the new year, which um, I hope to start doing it again and start doing my daily horse racing tips, which I used to do during the lockdowns, and people have been asking me to start doing it again. So I think if I'm going to start doing it again, I shall start on the 1st of January. So I do think that is something that people may like to do. Um, um, there we go. Um, right. Would I own a gun? Um, I have owned guns. Yes, I like guns. I've no problem with guns for um, as long as they're used responsibly. Yes. Um, if you live on a farm and um, you grew up in the countryside and you go shooting for, you know, the pot, I think that's perfectly good. I just think Gun reform in America is needed. That is a different place, um, a different kind of thing. Um, right. Um, Anna Perkins says, my silver charcoal marbled Bengal Xander celebrates his first birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday to Xander tomorrow. Um, you share a name with... Uh, um, Xander in the Archers, the son of um, the village chef and his the farmer's husband, his husband. Um, right. And um, formerly ITBC will be in Newmarket on Tuesday. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. The Newmarket is a wonderful place. Um, will I do a dry January? Certainly not. That is for complete idiots. That is like many other stupid things, like National Burger Day, National Dry Cleaning Day, National um, Moth Day, National, um, you know, Nose Cleaner Day, you know, whatever, National Ironing Day, all those stupid things. I do not participate in such gibberish, a complete load of rot. Don't be so taken in by these nonsense. It's rather like all these festivals that the likes of the Hallmark um, 
card company hijack and say you've got to have this day and that day and the other day because they can sell more greetings cards because people don't send cards anymore so they've got to think of a way of trying to recapture the audience they've lost november is another load of nonsense says um nicole i tend to agree with you and um, do i do valentine's day no i i avoid restaurants on valentine's day that's the only day of the year i would never go to a restaurant because it's full of people grimacing at one another who do not want to be there and um they'd rather probably eat wasp snails and paving stones than be in the same room so no i don't get involved in that i'd rather stay at home and have a gin um and all bottles of gin are welcome because you know gin uh, is something that we all enjoy and at the magnet they have loved the number three and um i hope to take the um landlord and his lady friend up to um the london to um explore the cellars where the number three comes from in the new year with my friend who is in charge there so number three gin is what i recommend to you this christmas if you go to your local waitrose i'm sure you can find a bottle there or you can buy it online um again i have no affiliation with any of these products but um it's just what i like and um if you like another gin fisher's gin is a fantastic gin made with samphire from suffolk by a lovely gentleman called andrew held um healed um uh, he is up there he's a great person and he makes a great gin um my friend who is involved with the man we talked of earlier, James Martin, James Martin's gin, another lovely gin. Um, I love Martin Miller's gin, as many of you know. Um, and Gilpin's gin from the Lake District is also especially fantastic if you like a stronger naval strength gin. They do an excellent one. Um, I'm trying to think who I've missed out here now. Um, and the Turlingham gin from here in Kent. Tullingham Vineyard. It's made with the Bacchus um, Bacchus wine um, leftovers from their vineyards. So if you can get hold of a bottle of that, it's wonderful. I've had a couple of bottles of that. I would recommend that to many of you. I urge you to try it out and um, give it a go. It's a wonderful thing to sample. Um, please have, have, give it a go. And thank you to so, Cio Mario, oh, Mario, um, for your £4.99 donation um, for a gin. That's um, It might just about get me uh, a gin, yes, £5. Um, you're lucky to get um, a beer. You don't even get a beer for that, unfortunately, in England now with the taxes. But, but thank you very much. That will go way towards a gin. So... Thank you very much. That's very, very kind of you. But um, no, a, a pint of beer in London is now seven pounds, which is ludicrous. But thankfully, um, one good thing that the government did in the last budget was not to increase tax on alcohol any further. It's already overtaxed. Um, there we go. So it's rather unfortunate. That, um uh, what do I think of Bombay gin? Um, it's perfectly drinkable, but it's not my favorite. Um, if I had to have an everyday supermarket type gin, um, I would go for Beef Eater, which is perfectly reasonable. I like Beef Eater very much, or Tanqueray. They are the two gins of choice. Um, never Gordon's. Gordon's gin is like tap water. It's terrible. It's 37.5% and weak. Um don't I love Lady Glen Connor? Um, I think Lady Glen Connor is a fantastic woman, and I've got a, a, a lady, in fact, and a delightful lady who's had uh, to endure rather a lot um, with her life in Mustique, with her husband and all the rest of it, and her involvement with the royal family. Um, she is a superb person. Lady Glen Connor is to be saluted and celebrated. And I think Lady Glen Connor is a great person. So um, there we go. Um, here we go. We've been going for one hour and 14 minutes. Um, Busted loves Solway Cork Gin. Well, Busted, I've never tried Solway Cork Gin. So if you wish to send a bottle to the Magnet, I will happily give it a go and I'll give you a review. But um, I don't know where I've, I've tried I've tried everything from lobster and oyster gin, which was disgusting, to 
the Citadel, which has 46 botanicals, which is equally disgusting, to wonderful gins like Number 3 and Martin Miller's, which I um, which I have happily been involved with um, and shared with the world, because frankly, I think that they are fantastic. And though I am not paid by them, I think they're great. And they're absolutely wonderful products. Um, there are other gins out there, which I think are not gins. There are flavoured gins. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to get involved in a whole dialogue about it because I don't want to attract your interest in them. But some people like certain products. I do think that they are not real gin. Um, cork gin is a good gin. Any Irish friends can send Matthew a bottle, says Paulie. Um I believe there's a gin from Ireland called Titanic. I believe that's worth trying, but I've never tried it. Um, some things you can get. And, and, and these Japanese gins, I'm not, I've tried those. I'm not particularly into those. But, you know, I've tried Australian gin. I've tried, I've got a gin from the south of France here. I've got uh, all sorts of gin. Um, a whole mixture. Um Socio Mario, how do I send folks, please? Um, well, if you would like to send anything to me um, for comment or review, people send me books. They send me all sorts of things, quiz books. So um, we've got enough quiz books to keep us going, let's be frank. Um, but no, the Magnet um, in Albion Street, Broadstairs, Kent, England. Um, if you Google it, you can find it, and it's possible to send things there. They tend to receive my post and the post of other people because, um, um, you know, I'm not always at home. So I, I do travel a bit and I go to France and I go to London and I have a bit here, there and everywhere these days. So, um, you know, the Isle of Man gin. the drink of Scylla Black. No, Scylla Black, Kevin, like to drink... Um, oranges chopped in half, filled with an OXO cube. She made a video about this. Scylla Black is really one of the strangest people I've ever had to sit next to at a dinner party. She did speak for nearly an hour about how she bought a Bentley and had her, her name sewn into the headrests. She's a very, very strange woman. But anyway, on that note, I think we've uh, exhausted the topics. Yes, disgusting Scylla Black. Um, uh, you hope I buy the landlady the magnet a nice box of chocolates. Um, um, we're going on a gin drinking tour, actually. That's how we're going to celebrate, actually. Thank you, Anna, for your suggestion, but we're actually going on a gin drinking tour. And we had lunch, yes, last Sunday. Thank you very much to you all. And um, I hope to be able to give you some news of some dates of possible events in the new year. Um, I was meant to do a tour, as you know, with a certain person, but I won't go into that. So maybe it's soon time that I do my own and we'll be thinking about where and when, and maybe it may begin here in Broadstairs. It may begin in London. I don't know. We'll work it out. But thank you very, very much to you. And um, good night and good gardening. And as the late, great Jill Dando once said, please don't have nightmares. Take care. Good night. <laughs>